Aloha. This is Unity Grace, and we are live from a very special place in Costa Rica, Manuel Antonio, a communal home called Cora Vida, where uh, the cicadas are chiming in, and um, where we have been in a very deep process over the last few weeks, uh, very, very deep dives into humanity's DNA uh, for the ascension of humanity through the breaking of the tribal blood bonds um, that existed within the RNA of our DNA. So we are here with um, some beautiful filmmakers and we are doing an interview and was also very guided to do this live feed. So maybe Jenna, if you just want to pan the family so everyone can see who we're here with. No, where's Josh? Oh, hey, Baba. <laughs> so, as always with transmissions, um, we never know what's going to come through, but we're going to start the interview and um, see what is to come through for all of humanity through this transmission. And so those of you who may have been following the live feeds that I've been bringing through since the middle of February, that's the time that the guidance started giving permission um, to bring through basically the coordinates that um, jump step our acceleration of our inner standing of what's happening within us, like the caterpillars turning into the butterfly. These coordinates that are coming through are helping the caterpillar to understand its internal process so that it can align through ease and grace and the external process then can line up and flow easily and effortlessly on this great tsunami wave that is taking us all on this great uh, ride of transformation together as, as a human species um, through these ascension gates. So I'm um, going to hand the questioning over to, are you starting the questioning, Ron? Uh, yes, yes. Did you want to just do a little intro on the live feed? Yeah, okay. Hi there, I'm Rob, and I've been going around the world for a couple of, a couple of years now and asking pretty much the same questions to the change makers I'm meeting and giving them a chance to share their messages with the world. And everything I'm doing is for free and open source, and I'm inviting everyone who sees this to help share the message, because sharing is caring, and when we're all caring and sharing, there's nothing left to do but enjoy everything that's given to us freely and uh, particularly just not to shit where we eat <laughs> and then we're all good. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, start by asking a few questions to, to, to Unity Grace and then uh, it will be open to the floor to ask other questions. As the Cicada Choir chimes in uh, from this beautiful home, Corvita. So can you tell us particularly uh, at this moment what you're being guided to share with the world about what is happening right now? Okay. Okay, so the guidance says that we're currently in a process of the final phases of merging of our two-strand DNA within us. So the two-strand DNA is constructed on the foundational pieces of the Alpha and the Omega. And those are codings within our consciousness and our psyche that our current flesh suit and personality has been um, constructed on. And so what has occurred recently is the breaking of the electromagnetic boundaries that we've been held inside of by time and space. There's no accident that right now we are in the Holy Week uh, 
here in Costa Rica called Santa Shaman or Santa Semana. And what the guidance came through and said is it's actually the week of Santa Shamana and Shaman, the, the Shaman and the Shamanas within us to awaken because inside of two strand DNA we are bound by the cross of time and space and we are having an opportunity now to liberate our consciousness from being bound to that cross and take the quantum leap beyond the two strand DNA and this is all coded within the genes that make up our human design our 64 codons we, we have 64 Lego blocks in this human design and those 64 codons we get to choose a series of building blocks from and that's what's currently made the design that we're in and so those bonds are now for, um, transforming and um, we, that's why we're going through a pole shift on the earth the poles on the earth are actually neutralizing and as they do it gives the consciousness which has been bound by time and space called Alpha and Omega the two original building blocks within us we're being given the opportunity to electromagnetically release our consciousness from that bondage and in doing so it allows us to open back up to um, the cosmic tree of possibility and potential and this is true free energy this is the true unlocking of super abundance is the potential of the liberation of the consciousness uh, to remember that it's infinite in potential and infinite in possibility and so that's where we're at and over the last week or so the last few days the guidance has continually said that we're being prepared for the jump program and the jump program is our transcendence of our belief and bondage to gravity. The belief that we're held by gravity is the final piece for the ascension of a planetary system and a consciousness. And so that's, that's the place where we're at right now. And the guidance informed this morning that um, the Omega, the field of the Omega, if we think of the Omega within us, the yin energy, as like the great void, now the Alpha, that rigidity or structure that has formed all of our psyche and our consciousness and our external structures, is folding back into the batter of the void. And so the metaphor the guidance uses is like a big mixing bowl. Of, of batter and and when you're making a cake you run a spatula around the edge of that bowl to continually bring the dry ingredients into the mix and that's what's happening for us right now <laughs> as the choir chimes in of the of the jungle um, to support this human process and that's the, nature, that's the natural sounds of nature, especially the night sounds. And we become so removed in our Western, our, our Western world from the sounds of nature and the sounds of, of the jungle, which will help to keep us in alignment with the cosmic process that's happening throughout and beyond all time and space. So what the guidance informed this morning is that the yin, the batter, is like fully open, the, the feminine nature of all of us, and it's just receiving the final pieces of the rigidity of our structure, that alpha aspect of ourself. And so it's asking each one of us now to just consciously begin to monitor and support and uh, prepare that alpha to, to really run the spatula along that side of the pole of who we are. Okay, we, and we're just going to take a break to reset the camera. Okay, perfect. So, for, for this process to be experienced smoothly and effortlessly by all of us, that's, that's the navigational coordinates that the guidance brings is how to make the journey smooth as possible so that we're not experiencing the depths of the suffering that can occur when we're, when we're lost in the process. 
where when we don't know where we are in the forest of this process, it can be very scary and it, we can feel lost. So the metaphor is just to begin to really monitor the aspects of the self that are still forceful, that are dominant, um, that are noisy, that are erratic. Um, those aspects we're being asked now to fold into the batter and soften. Because if we soften the rigidity of our alpha, the batter, like, like the guidance says, the batter, the yin is already prepared and it's wide open. It's like when the cervix is, the baby is birthing and the cervix is open and the baby is coming through. And so it's kind of the same metaphor. It's like the cervix of creation, the field of yin is now open. And by folding our alpha qualities in consciously, what's going to happen is the alpha is actually going to merge into that field and, and we go through the birth canal of which none of us know what it looks like or where it takes us. But that's the metaphor that we're being given to have an understanding so that we can work with our energies within moment by moment and track the process so that we're not putting out more energies that make our process feel more difficult than it needs to. So that right now is where we're at. And uh, what is love? What is love? That is such a good question. And um, I'm just going to make sure that our, our um, Kelly, do you want to just check, just because a phone call came in, just make sure that happens. Um, what is love is the best question of all, as the bell chimes. Twice now when we started this interview tonight, the church bells chimed, which they don't normally on a Wednesday night. And now they're chiming again um, from down in the, in the town of Caicos as we ask the question, what is love? Love is neutrality in its finest cosmic form. It is the merging of the polarities of duality back into the tree of love. So time and space within us and within the structure of creation is once again what creates the polarities. Love in the, the level of our psyche and our conscious process with humanity and being human is a process of acceptance of what is. It's a process of non-judgment. It's a process of learning that everything on the external is a reflection of our internal world. And so the process of love in the early phases is to begin to understand that the external will never align with us internally until we find this neutral place within. And so the shadow frequency of what is love is hunger because we continually hunger for something outside of the self to fill us with what we believe love to be. And as we begin to find that nothing outside of us will ever fill us, then we begin to come within. And in order for us to find the balance to go through the gateways of ascension, it's a process of neutralizing what is internal so that the external can meet, the internal and external can meet, and then the veils between the two of separation collapse, and the internal and the external become the field of pure love. In, in Star Wars, may the force be with you. The force in the Vedas, the fifth force in the Vedas is love. It is the field of all of creation that connects everything. And so in order to connect into that field, as humans on this human journey that we've experienced in duality, it's about learning to collapse the polarities over and over and over within us. And how do we know what the polarities are? 
we discover the polarities in our external triggers and our external triggers will show us where there's a polarity where we're giving energy outside of us so that that polarity is um, what we call uh, energy leakage outside of the cell and so as we learn to use the triggers merely as a state of showing us where we have a polarity that's longing to be collapsed back into neutrality we can stop judging the polarities and we can begin to use them as a source of um, uh, a fuel uh, an indication a navigational coordinate of which pieces of us are longing to be collapsed back into the batter so that we can align with the 3015. The 35th gene is the shortcut out of this story of duality that we're in. It's the secret gene that's programmed in the 64 codons of our DNA. And it's the shortcut through because it has the capacity to write its own story by risking it all for love. So to risk it all for love means to tra take the great adventure to begin to love every experience. It doesn't mean that through discernment that experience is part of a world that we want to keep perpetuating. But in order to move this field to the heaven on earth that is programmed within us, love is the acceptance of what is without uh, giving our energy to it to empower it love is the acceptance of what is externally which through that love it gives us the polarity to neutralize back into us to still the field over and over so love in its highest frequency is stillness love in its highest frequency is this alchemical process to neutralize our polarities because as long as we continually get triggered by something outside of us in this dualistic reality we will continue to allow some aspect of our energy to empower it and so this is the process that we're in of saying we've done this walk in two strand DNA we've done this walk in duality and this is why the consciousness is giving us the shortcut through the 35th gene of love and when we get into the highest aspect of what love really is love is pure insanity to the rational mind because love is all giving of itself back into the field it holds on to nothing it is the state of complete total non-attachment loving relinquishing letting go loving relinquishing letting go and this brings us back to preparing us to the jump program which i call flight lessons 101 which were downloaded to me in 2015 which are basically teaching the consciousness the concepts the the actual mechanics of creation of this two-strand dna which is a mechanical process to depart from so, so love in the highest frequency is that capacity to use these teachings of Flight Lessons 101 to transcend the bondage of time and space, which is what this Holy Week and the Christ on the Cross actually represents. The Christ on the Cross. We're going to just take a break. Reset. So, so the Christ on the cross is our consciousness bound by time and space. And now we have the liberty to, um, or the, the, the opportunity to liberate our consciousness from that bondage, which allows us the capacity to return home to the stars, to, to the multiverse that we exist inside of that we're limited to perceive at this time because of the capacities of these physical vessels 
the capacity of our pine meal because of the limitations that we agreed to to have a specific experience in reality. And now we're ready to take the journey home to the stars for the consciousness to explore other realms, other choices, other opportunities, and this is what's available to everyone. And the most important thing to, to state is that the guru is within. What is coming through me and others is just the mechanical teachings of how to do this. These teachings have no moralistic base. They are based strictly in bringing back to our awareness the mechanics of this creation and how to operate inside of time and space and beyond. So in the highest frequency, in, in, in the mechanics of our existence, love is a totally non-romantic thing. And that said, love is the driving force within each of us to create a heaven on earth within and all around us that we know that we are capable of creating. That is the love in its most expansive state that is calling each of us forward to be courageous enough to take these teachings and apply them within us moment by moment such that we can actually have our internal world in that state of stillness and neutrality to create externally outside of us the heaven on earth that we know that exists and is possible. And from that place, the field of love will take on a whole new containment that no one is, is, is knowing of. But we're, we're here together to take that, that risk to, to explore this experiment collectively. And this is why we came to see what's, what love's true potential is as we pass through this gate together. And so a, tr a true education for people who are um, coming to this awareness now and have small children who are growing up in the new reality, what is a true education for a child now? That's such a great question. Um, the true education for a child, and this is what these children are doing before their birthing, they're emanating out a frequency of this new earth consciousness already, which is actually organizing the field around them before they come. It is organizing these communities on the earth that are coming together now, that are receiving the teachings that are doing the work to neutralize ourselves back to wholeness, to uplift our sacral energy, activate our entire auric fields into sovereign, which means we don't require anything outside of ourselves. And Bruce Lipton explains, explains it the best with the table of elements. Louder, if you can. Le louder? If you can, yeah. Um, so on the table of elements, everything on the table of elements requires a proton or an electron to complete itself, except the seven noble gases. The seven noble gases have polarized, have taken, have neutralized their polarities, and so they don't require anything outside of themselves. And so that doesn't mean that noble gases don't come together. They just don't come together through need. They come together through choice. And our current existence has been that we, our relationships have all been based on need. Um, <laughs> They've been based on need, which has created what the Celestine prophecies taught us, was this energy vampiring that was perpetuating through all relationships of the human family, that was based on need through the, the lower sacral energy, because we had not risen that energy up to activate and unify the communion, the sixth initiation of this nine initiation process. The sixth initiation is when the lower self gives its reins back to the higher self and the higher self takes over and all the dreams and all the desires and all the visions and all the, the free will that we had because we're coming to the completion of the free will experiment. 
all of that is given back to the higher self and at that point the higher self comes into the human vessel and uplifts that energy which creates the the dissolution of the separation between the lower chakras and the higher chakras activates the whole kundalini restores our field to sovereign and it can be a very confusing piece for the consciousness because the consciousness feels like it's fighting something outside of itself when actually what's happening is it's the battle of the serpent and the dove the lower nature is the serpent and the dove is the Christ consciousness that's now involuted back into the self to show the way so anytime we feel that we're experiencing some kind of chaos, it's actually the chaos within of this in beautiful internal process of the reunification of our, our free will experiment returning to the, it's the, the bride and the bridegroom coming back together in the chalice, which is this physical vessel that marriage is occurring within. So, um, the children and and the families and we can just take a pause for a minute if you need to ask something we need the external lights yeah okay. yeah that's laid up enough for okay so um then the question about education these new incoming children are holding a frequency of wholeness they're sovereign beings so keeping in mind that frequency only exists in duality it's a wave so so whenever we're in time and space there's some aspect of a wave until we transcend it because a lot of a lot of realms in existence do not exist inside a wave so the new children are coming from a place of wholeness and sovereign. They are already the unification of heaven on earth within. And they are guiding us from beyond here to reorganize our fields into these communities to receive them, to form a container which will allow them to be the messiahs and showing us the gateways and their emanation to us helps us to return to that state as well. So education as we know it is dissolving and the true definition we could say right now of education is merely to receive the coordinates from those of us who are bringing them through the mechanical teachings that are helping us to reorganize ourselves to sovereign and then reorganize our communal fields into unity, to unify into this unified consciousness such that we become the container to receive the teachers, the messiahs, the children who are carrying, we can only use languaging in English right now that makes sense to us who are carrying the codes. But where we are really going is beyond codes, it's beyond templates, it's beyond structures, it's beyond all of these things we know, which is why the Hopi prophecy said, push off. Push off from the edge of the river. There are those who will be afraid and they will hang on tightly and they will suffer greatly. The edge of the river is everything we've ever known ourselves and our external reality to be. That, that's the true edge of the river that we're pushing off from and we're navigating that moment by moment fearlessly. And that's what these teachings bring is how to navigate ourselves fearlessly through this process so that we can still the emotional waters of our bodies in order to receive the coding, the cymatics of creation that is coming in. So anyone who understands or has seen what cymatics is, cymatics is um, a signal that comes from creation and turns spirit or essence or ether into form. It organizes the, the ether into form. And that's why we're coming to the teachings of how to still the waters of our beings 
so that the cymatic of creation can imprint upon us. Currently, we are flesh suits that are bags of water. Many would show me one drop of water is all it takes to change the world. By stilling the waters of our beings, then we can receive the cymatic emanation that will reorganize us as the caterpillar into the butterfly. And so this is a time for many of us, this is why the guidance is saying for us to, to really trust now, to, to, to um, fold our alpha, our forceful qualities that have gotten us to where we are, to fold that back into the batter, into the void within us, because everyone has their masculine and their feminine. Everyone has the void within. And so a huge part of this time right now is stillness and, and allowing ourselves to remove ourselves from the consciousness of Nike just do it, trying to create another project, another community, etc. What we really want to start doing is taking more time out inside of these teachings in stillness together to allow the consciousness to guide us, the higher emanations to show us the way. Okay, let's just... We can take a break. So, so we now. can just... So that's part one of our live feed. Thank you so much for participating. We're going to continue on with our um, amazing process here together, and um, we may come back online. We're just reorganizing in... The, the light Stage now setting. descending. What's that? Stage setting. Stage setting, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mahalo ke kua, great spirits, um, all. <laughs>